uh, from John chapter 20. Uh, John uh, chapter 20, we're going to read from uh, verses 19 uh, down to verse 23, the reading uh, that you see in the screen. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side, and the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. He had said this, he breathed in them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Amen. May God add his blessing to that reading from his holy word. During this uh, period of lockdown that, you know, for each one of us is, uh, is difficult, it's new, it's, it's, it's restraining. You know, we can actually forget that the very first Easter for the disciples of Jesus was, was also one of, of lockdown. It was difficult. It was new. It was restraining for them. There they were in a, a house in Jerusalem, a, a small house. Houses uh, then were particularly small. Ten disciples gathered in that room, crammed into that house, not wanting to leave it for fear of being recognized by those who had put Jesus uh, to death. They were in fear, fear of those who had, who had put the Lord uh, on, uh, on trial and put the Lord on the cross. And these disciples, they were confused. They were, they were afraid. They were confused in their, in their fragile weakness because they assumed that uh, the Lord uh, was dead and, and remained dead. They were fragile because in their weakness, they, they reckoned that, well, they were on their own and, and the world was against them. What was to happen to them? The Lord and Master now dead with uh, the world opposed to, uh, to them as they had uh, followed the Lord Jesus. But of course, their, their assumptions were assumptions. Their assumptions were based on, on their own reasoning. They hadn't taken in the words that Jesus had spoken to them more than once when he said that he'd be killed and on the third day rise again. They hadn't taken in his word. I mean, after all, in their, their three years of being with Jesus, Jesus had never erred at all in any of his words. Jesus had never made one false promise. Jesus had never uttered one wrong word. And so their failure to believe Jesus was really a, 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 an act of lack of faith in their, in their Lord and Savior. But as, we, as we've read in the passage, that short passage we read, we we see that Jesus will not condemn them for their weakness. What do we read? We read instead that he shows them grace and he assures them of his love and his forgiveness and, and in fact sends them on a mission, the mission of the Lord, God, Lord's mission, that they will leave their locked house and they will spread the good news of the risen Savior. Their lockdown wasn't going to be permanent. Their lockdown actually would be an opportunity for them to, to meet with the risen Jesus and, and be confirmed in, their, in, in his peace towards them and their peace with him. Their being in that locked room when Jesus comes to meet them actually shows the Lord's love for them and the Lord's command to them that they will leave that house and they will take with them the message of salvation and the Lord Jesus. And so that lockdown for these disciples, in fact, was a blessing. Because in that day, in their restraint, they met with Jesus. And as we, if we had read on in, in John 20, you would see, of course, that uh, later, the, the next week, the, the other disciple, Thomas, Thomas uh, goes into that house. And in that uh, still lockdown, uh, Thomas's faith is strengthened when he meets 
and sees the Lord Jesus. I pray that during this time of lockdown, this time that we are finding difficult, that we'll realize, in fact, that it is a blessing. God has given us this time for a particular reason, in fact, many reasons. But tr surely included in these reasons is the opportunity that God has given us the more to meet with him. And that your strength is, 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 is your faith is strengthened in him. And I pray that in this time that your faith actually is being energized. So that when the time does come, when, when this lockdown ends, that you'll go out with the word and that with that zeal for the Lord, with your faith strengthened in him. And that you'll be a means to, to spread the good news of salvation in and through the Lord Jesus Christ. You are, who know him, a follower of Jesus. You've been given that word to give to others. And we pray that that word will be sent and that you will be sent with that word. What do we see then in, in these verses? What's the, if you like, the main theme in these verses? Well, surely the main theme is contrast. Contrast. Let's look at the contrast. Let's read again verse 19. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. I mean, the contrast couldn't have been greater. I mean, outside that, that house in Jerusalem, outside were, were those who put Jesus to death. Outside were, were those who, who had put Jesus in trial. Outside were, were those who condemned Jesus for blasphemy. And outside were those who had crucified their Lord, those who hated him. Those who, who'd reckoned that by putting Jesus on that cross and, and killing him, that for them, Jesus was finished, his life was finished, that these so-called blasphemies were put to an end, and that there'd be no more of that carpenter from Nazareth who, who had so many delusions about himself. But inside the house, what do we see? We see Jesus. See Jesus meeting with his disciples, Jesus in person, making his first resurrection appearance to his disciples. And Jesus pronouncing peace upon that group of, of frightened followers. I mean, for a, for a whole day since, since the morning of Jesus' resurrection from the dead, for a whole day, these, these disciples had been in a state of fear. They, they were in that fear because, well, they realized there was much danger outside of that house. They were in fear about what was going to happen to them now as they reckoned. The Lord and Master was, was dead. But as we read the, the transfigured, resurrected uh, Lord Jesus, Jesus walked into that room. The grave couldn't hold Jesus. Death couldn't hold Jesus. That locked door had no power over, over the Lord Jesus. Because Jesus, the Lord of creation, still the Lord of creation. And Jesus enters that, that locked room and, and we see Jesus standing there, Jesus speaking to the disciples. We see that truly Jesus is present. He's truly physical in his, in his resurrected body. We see that. He stands. He's, he has posture. He speaks. He, he has voice, human voice. He, he, he has that presence. He has that, that grace to declare to his disciples peace be with you. These are the disciples who'd sealed themselves in that house out of fear from, from those in the outside. Now in the inside, they've been given the blessing of peace from, from the Prince of Peace. And so we see that, that contrast that's revealed there, and uh, the contrast between the fear of the disciples and the peace that Jesus gives. And so they're not to despair that their fear will be dispelled by the Lord Jesus, the Prince of Peace, as he gives his peace to these disciples. In fact, as, as we noticed when we were reading there, we, we noticed, in fact, that Jesus utters these words twice to the disciples, peace be with you. We might say peace to emphasize what Jesus is, 
is bestowing on these disciples. You might ask, well, why these particular words? I mean, after all these were words of, of common greeting at that time, shalom, peace. But for the disciples, these words certainly would have an immediate resonance for them. That Jesus, uh, when Jesus had given them his farewell speech before his, his, his arrest, Jesus said to them that we read in John 14, 27, Jesus said, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. So we might say, first of all, anyway, that the peace that Jesus was giving certainly was more than an ordinary greeting. We might say, first of all, uh, Jesus is showing forgiveness, giving forgiveness to his disciples. These disciples are being restored to Jesus. So we see there was peace between the disciples and Jesus. After all, these disciples had deserted Jesus when Jesus was arrested. These disciples had all forgotten the words that Jesus had given to them that prior to uh, that he would die and be raised again the third day. And now Jesus is declaring to his disciples that he's forgiven them for their, for their lack of faith. And he's pronouncing peace upon them to show that they don't need to be frightened. They don't need to be frightened of those on the outside, those who are the authorities. Because Jesus is the one who'd conquered death. He was with them and he would ensure their, their safety. But of course, that pronouncement of peace upon the disciples was much, much more than simply a, a, a word to, an immediate word to these disciples. That pronouncement of peace revealed that Jesus had come to bring peace and, and reconciliation between God and man that Jesus had achieved by his death on the cross. And so to emphasize that peace with God through, through his death, Jesus, Jesus does something, as we read in the passage. Jesus shows them his hands and his side. In other words, Jesus was saying to them, he's saying, look, look at these nail-pierced hands. Look at these hands that were nailed to the cross. Look at what they're saying. Look at what they're pointing to. They're pointing to that sacrifice that I made for you and for all who are mine. And as Jesus shows them that his spear-pierced side, he's saying, look, this is the evidence that my life was given for you. These marks in my body, that testimony that by my death you have life. Jesus saying to these disciples that, that I, the, the risen Lord, I'm showing you all this to comfort you, to reassure you that you have peace with God because of my sacrifice on the cross. And so we're told there in, in verse 20 that the disciples and, and seeing Jesus and what he showed of himself to them, that they were glad when they saw the Lord. And in this, well, late afternoon, this coming towards evening again, this day when particularly we remember the resurrection of our Lord and Saviour, pray that you will know that peace, that peace of the Lord Jesus, that you'll know that even now in, in, in your various homes, amidst all the tension and strife in this world, I missed all the, the real fear that there is that this pandemic has brought into the, the lives of so many homes and in every country of the world. But I pray that you will know the Lord's peace surrounding you and that you will know that you don't need to fear because as Jesus says, I am with you. I pray that will truly make you glad as the disciples were glad when they saw Jesus. The disciples were truly overjoyed uh, there in that, that little room, that sealed room in, in Jerusalem. Well, I pray that you will be rejoicing, even glad to know that the Lord is with you. You know, we were thinking this morning of the, the blessing that the Lord's people have of, of seeing Jesus, of seeing him by faith, that seeing Jesus that brings, that brings joy to the heart of, of every believer. Well, as you by faith see the risen Lord Jesus, 
as you see him in his word, as you know him in your heart. I pray that that seeing the Lord Jesus will, will have resulted in, in your faith being transformed, in your zeal being transformed, that you'll have that, that true desire to, to serve him with all that you are, and that truly you will have done with, with lesser things, and that you'll be willing to be sent by the Lord as, as the disciples were being sent by the Lord, as we see there in, in verse 21 through to verse 23. Again, let's read these words. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed in them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it's withheld. Jesus had been sent from all eternity, a Savior, a Savior who'd redeem his people. Jesus had come willingly. He'd come lovingly. He, he came sacrificially. He, he was and is the saint one. But as Jesus' ministry had, had been accomplished when he gave himself on the cross and when he cried out, it is finished, it is accomplished. Jesus bore the sins of his people on the cross. Then Jesus declared, my work is accomplished, but still work to be done by his people. And so Jesus sends out his disciples to, to further the work of, of the proclamation of the gospel. And that work that these disciples were, that were sent on to, to, to continue, they would do so and would pass on to others. And that work continually being passed on through generations. And that work of proclaiming the good news will continue until the Lord returns. And just think of who Jesus is sending out with that message. He's sending out these very disciples who just a few days before had deserted him. But Jesus will send out these disciples. And as we read, of course, in Scripture, Jesus, after his ascension into heaven, he, he sends his disciples to, uh, empowered with the Holy Spirit, the Spirit to empower uh, his followers, to speak his word, to do his word, to tell others the glorious gospel of salvation in and through the Lord Jesus. And Jesus sent his disciples as he sends you and he sends me by his authority, empowered by the Holy Spirit, as we're to be sent as children of our Heavenly Father. And we really do need to take this in just for a moment, because everything that we do as a church, everything we do as a congregation, all that you do as followers of the Lord Jesus, you do, not by our own authority, but you do and we do by the authority of the Saviour. And that has to be so reassuring, both at this time and in all times, that every time the word is preached, that word is preached by the authority of the Lord Jesus. And if it's by his authority, he'll equip you and he'll empower you and he'll, and he'll enable you to witness for him, to declare in searchable riches of, of the Lord Jesus. And it's these words that Jesus promised his disciples as Jesus was ascending into heaven. And Jesus said, Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. As Christians, we, we go with the message of salvation. We go by the authority of Jesus. And we go by and in the power of the Holy Spirit. You see that in, in verse 22, there's Jesus saying there, we might say he's anticipating the giving of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. In other words, after Jesus ascended to heaven, uh, when, when the, the Holy Spirit came upon the church. And we see how Jesus, there in that room in Jerusalem, he's giving this word of promise. He's breathing on his disciples and he's telling them, receive the Holy Spirit. And, you know, as Jesus is saying, just as I send you, you'll go out with the gospel after I, I return to heaven. And you'll go out, and you'll go out, not in your own power, 
but in the power of God the Spirit. You know, when you do go, when you do proclaim the Lord's word, then you go proclaiming the truth. And when that word is proclaimed, then we have to say by authority of Scripture that men and women will either know the forgiveness of sins when that word is proclaimed in truth, or men and women will remain unforgiven. They refuse to believe the word. So when that word is proclaimed, when you go out with a message of salvation, when you do so empowered by the Holy Spirit, you do so as those who are saved and strengthened with a strength that ordinarily you, you don't have, ordinarily that I don't have. And God will use you and he'll gift you the particular gifts to go out with. He'll use even your very personalities. We're all different personalities. But God will use even these personalities that he's given you to witness to the risen Lord Jesus. The lockdown of these disciples would end and did end. Just as the lockdown that we're facing will end. These disciples in, in time, they, they, they left that, that safe house and and ventured into the world, and they went, ventured to spread the good news of Jesus. Some of these disciples wrote epistles, but all of them witnessed to the Lord Jesus by, by the enabling power of the Holy Spirit. And you, well in due course, you will leave your lockdown, once that lockdown's lifted, and you'll go forth with the word, and you'll go forth as his witnesses, and you'll be equipped to do so. Because we might say this, and even in this day and age that God has blessed us with, that, that even now through the means that God has given us, we're enabled even now to go forth with the word. Because yes, we have a, a physical lockdown, but that lockdown doesn't restrain the word of God. And so we thank God that God has given us the means to proclaim his, his word to, to a watching world. We give thanks for every opportunity that God has given us through the technology that we're blessed with to proclaim the good news of, of salvation. So we have that opportunity that the church has given. And that even, even in this time of lockdown, we can go forth and witness to the Lord and of the Lord. And when that lockdown is lifted, we go forth and, and witness person to person and witness for our Savior. Just as you testify now that you, you know the Lord of peace and you'll tell others of that peace that the world knows nothing of. And so we close this, this, we close this morning again with these thoughts that we see Jesus. We see there isn't Jesus who, who comforted his disciples there in that, in that locked, locked room there in Jerusalem. We see Jesus who comforted his disciples by his presence and with his word there on that first resurrection Sunday. And the same Lord Jesus who comforted his disciples there in Jerusalem is the same Lord Jesus who comforts you by his word. When he speaks to you of his peace upon you, both now and always. And we see Jesus, we see Jesus by faith. We see the risen Lord Jesus even in the glory of heaven. We see by faith there in heaven, his earthly body, with its nail pierced hands and feet, with his spear pierced side. We see by faith the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. We see Jesus, the risen Jesus, whose resurrection guarantees your resurrection. And we see Jesus, Jesus whom, whom the world won't accept, that you know and have received by the faith that you've been gifted. What if any even online this moment, even later when this goes out uh, on YouTube, what if you don't yet see Jesus? Well, I plead with you, turn to his word. You've got access to his word, turn to it. See the Savior 
who was crucified for you. See the Savior who died for you. See the Savior who, who rose from the dead for you. And look on him. Look on this the sinless Savior who took the sin of the, of the world upon himself and who promises to forgive the sins of all who come to him. If you look to the risen Lord Jesus and come to him and repent of your sins, I know that peace is beyond human comprehension. Another Easter is soon passing. May I ask you, have you given your life to the Lord Jesus, the Lord of Easter. The disciples there in that room, they gave their lives to Jesus. And Jesus chose them to go into all the world with the, the message of the good news of salvation, the Lord Jesus. The world needs and continues to need to hear that good news. And even the very backdrop of, of a pandemic surely is that opportunity to tell the world that there is a saviour, one saviour, the saviour who cleanses sin, the saviour who's alive. Tell the world that there's a saviour who, who gives that eternal hope of salvation so that you truly can say that, that nothing but nothing can separate you from the love of the Lord Jesus. Well, I pray then that as we're about to close this particular part of our service, I pray that God will bless you and have blessed you uh, by his word and that you truly will know the risen Lord Jesus in your life that you'll know him now and you'll know him always Amen and let's join together again in prayer let us pray Lord we thank you truly do thank you for your word your word of comfort your word of mercy we thank you Lord that truly by your word and by the enabling the help of the Holy Spirit, we see Jesus. And we pray, Lord, for all who have listened in uh, even this late afternoon and who even, but Lord, will continue to listen in, that they will know the saving grace uh, of the Savior. And so, Lord, be with us, Lord, we pray. Be with us even for the remainder of this day. Be with us, Lord, in this week that, that has begun. Lord, be near us each one. It bless us, we ask. Provide for us, protect uh, us in all, from all danger. Be near us, Lord. Cast out all fear as we trust in you. Lord, hear us as we, as we continue in worship before you now. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just close with a benediction. And now may grace, mercy, and peace from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, rest upon and remain with you, both now and forevermore. Amen.